overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And we are so glad you are joining us on this Monday here on Hope Today. I am here with the fabulous and wonderful Amanda. I'm so happy to be with you, friend. And we have an incredible story that's coming up and a guest that he is in the house right here at that's Hope Today. That's right. <laughs> we have Pastor Frank Rocco. And listen, y'all, he was dead. When I say dead, not like physically dead, but spiritually dead and Jesus made him alive. And what a story, Sydney, he has of that encounter with the Lord. And hey, that was 52 years ago. It's a pretty incredible story. You're not going to want to miss it. Maybe call someone up. There was, you know, he went through a very you know, hard upbringing just and got stuck on alcohol and other things in life that took him down a very dark path. But God, in the middle of it, I call someone up and tell them you need to watch today's Hope Today. I love when we have these stories, these testimonies, and he is from this area here in Pittsburgh. So wherever you're watching in Pittsburgh, Florida, Alabama, or anywhere, you know, we just love to have these stories and these testimonies because, you know, Amanda, one thing I just, this is my favorite thing to hear somebody's testimony, to hear somebody, what they've walked through, what they journeyed in life. It gives us the inspiration. It says if God did it for them, he could do it for me too. So if you have somebody that's battling with addiction, if you know somebody that is feeling downtrodden and out, I just really believe Pastor Rocco is going to really minister and speak to us, you know, and one thing I know this weekend, it was like a busy, busy time, like for both of us. And, you know, I was just was in Columbus over the weekend and I got to see my family for the first time. We haven't seen each other since the pandemic because we're all spread out. And so I got to see my grandfather and his wife and my aunt and like there, she's like moving to Idaho. I mean, there was like so much going on, but just the family coming together. And you know, one thing, Amanda, that was really inspiring, and encouraging to me is that I just see the like history and the spiritual richness and legacy of my family. And I just want to encourage you today with like all of our families. I know we're walking through things and going through things, but we were praying. I mean, there's things in my family just coming together where I was just like, you know what, this is where God is moving, that we all have a story. We all have things that we've gone through and walked through, but through our families that we can pray together, we can just see shifts and changes. So I just like believe that for your family today as well. Amen. And coming together on God's word, you know, yeah. he never disappoints. God will not fail. It's not in his nature and it's up to us to cling to his word and let it bring life to us. I love that Pastor Rocco, he said, hunger and thirst after righteousness and you will be filled. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but it doesn't matter who you are. Begin to hunger and thirst after righteousness and you will be filled. It's, it's not a, a question mark. God is giving us what we need to do and that is to hunger and thirst after righteousness. I have to share with you that this past weekend we had the wonderful opportunity to have a team from Dayton, Ohio. Young adults, y'all, they were school teachers, some of them were coffee barista. Um, anyhow, I don't know all their professions, but they gave of themselves in a beautiful way and it's amazing how when they just loved on people and the interactions that happen. Sydney, we cannot go in this life without putting into action the word of the living God. It is so true. And I just love the just hearing like, you know, one of the things I've just realized about love, love is a verb. And in God's, when he says, I love my people, it means to give. It is so important for us to give of ourselves, to serve others, to love others, and also to serve, I love others by sharing our stories. <laughs> Here we go. Well, when we return in 60 seconds, we'll be joined by Pastor Frank Rocco, and he's going to share his incredible story of how God God turned his life around. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Remember your childhood joy and excitement when being invited to a party? You felt valued, included, wanted, and ready to have a good time. Best-selling author Bob Goff believes that every day of life can be lived with the same childlike enthusiasm and sense of humor. Inside Love Does, you'll learn that love is a verb, not just a feeling. His insights and joyful reflections will help you discover what it means to live fully alive, even as you serve others. Prepare to encounter remarkable stories from Bob Goff's life as he shares how living and loving to the fullest is the best way to make Jesus known in this world. Request your copy of Love Does when you give your best gift this month. Your gift today will help Cornerstone Television show the life-changing love of Jesus through Christ-centered TV programs. 
Call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Well, our next guest has made it his mission to tell others about the good news of Jesus Christ. That hasn't always been his purpose in life, though. In fact, there was a point in his life when he didn't have a relationship with the Lord, and his life was empty and void of meaning. Pastor Frank Rocco now serves as the pastor at The Church in Soutersville, Pennsylvania, and he joins us now to share his story and how God intervened when he needed him most. Pastor Frank, it is great to have you today on Hope Today. It's good to be here with you. Amen. Well, tell us a little bit about your growing up and, and that miraculous moment that changed everything. Well, I can't go into too much, too, a whole lot about how it was, was when I was growing up. I just was never was a church boy, never went to church all my life. I was born Catholic. We were Catholics, my family, but my mom and dad never darkened the door of a church, and neither did I. And uh, my brothers and sisters, now they're different, but I never bothered going to church. I never wanted to go. I never had a desire to go. Didn't know anything about God. Didn't care anything about God. Until I was 19 years old, I got married. When I was 19, I knew everything. I was too, too, too cool for high school, and I had too much knowledge for college. So I got married in, uh, at 19 years old. This year, it's going to be 65 years. It's November that we've been married. That wouldn't have happened had I not met Jesus Christ. Our, our, our marriage was on a downhill way. Just like many people, mm -hmm. we had but 13 years of marriage, and uh, I spent a lot of years drinking. I started when I was a young man, and then uh, after I was married, we had a child when he was 21 years old. We had a little boy, and then we had a little girl right after that, a year after. And uh, I just uh, I like to talk about it. Okay, All right. but anyhow, you know, I was about 31 years old, and I. After I'd get done working, I'd go home and eat my supper with my family, my wife and the two kids. They were nine and 11 years old at that time. And I would lay on my couch and I would think about dying. I always took a nap after supper and then I went down the road, you know. And, uh, and I would think about dying there. Instead of sleeping, I'd lay there and I'd think, I said, man, if I could die right now, I'm 31 years old. I said, what's to keep me from dying? People die when they're younger, older. I said, I could die right now. I'd never see my kids again. I'd never see my wife again. She's out there doing the dishes. The kids are there on the floor playing. I said, I never see my mother, my father. I never see none of my relatives. Never again. Never again. And it was terrible. You know, I'd think about that, you know. And then I'd get myself, I'd go to sleep. And then the next night, I'd do the same thing. That same thought would come to my mind, wow. you know. And it really bothered me. I was in the world without hope, yes. you know. And, and, uh, and, and truthfully, that's the way the world is. Mm -hmm. We're in the world without hope. Hope is a great thing. In hope of everlasting life, the Bible says, in hope of everlasting life, whom God had prom cannot lie, hath promised us. Mm -hmm. And so there is life after death where we could see them again. I never knew this. The world doesn't know this. Right. They don't really know the benefits of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and, the, and the life that he brought to us. They have no idea. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, And you hath he quickened, that means given life, who were dead in your sins and trespasses. Who in times past, he said, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, mm -hmm. among whom we all had our former way of life. We were all dead in our sins and trespasses. We were shaped in iniquity and conceived in sin, Psalms 51, 5, in our mother's womb. Mm -hmm. And so we all have a death sentence because the wages of sin, 623 of John, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So there is eternal life, and we can live eternal life. Mm -hmm. You say, well, who are we, and how do we live eternal life? We live inside of these bodies. When God made man, he made him out of the dust of the earth. But before he made him, he said, let us make man, and let's make him after our likeness and after our image, God said. Mm -hmm. So we serve God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. We serve a triune God. So in, six, seven, or in 2, 7 of Genesis, he said, God poured him out of the dust of the earth, and he breathed into man's nostrils, and man became a living soul. Okay, so man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. We don't know anything about the soul and the spirit. We only know about this body, this flesh, and we lived after it. But we're dead to God. And you have the quickened who were dead in your sins and treasure. Well, we were dead to God because when Adam sinned in the garden, he was separated from God. We was born after Adam's likeness. We were born in sin, conceived in sin, and shaped in iniquity in our mother's womb. 
So that's how we were born. So every man, woman, and child is born in sin, is born separated from God, and don't know God, and you can't know God until you get the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can say, I have faith in God up there. I, and see, I heard a lot of people talking about different things. But it's not just having faith in the man up there. It's knowing the man up there whose name is Jesus Christ. Okay? Jesus says in 17.3 of John, And this is life everlasting, to know thee, Father, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. In 1 John 5.20, he says there, And we know that the Son of God hath come and hath given us an understanding that we might know him that is true and that we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God. Jesus Christ is God. He was there in the beginning. There was nothing that was made that was made without him. All things were made by him. Okay? See, Jesus is God, manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up in the glory. That's what the Bible says. Without controversy, no argument, okay? Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. He did that. He had to come in the flesh. He took a body back in Hebrews 2, 14, like unto the brethren, okay? To redeem us, okay, to, to, to kept us under the bondage of Satan, okay, through the, spirit, uh, through the fear of death. Okay, he come to deliver us from that bondage. He took a body like what we have. He had to become a man to, to be a, a human substitutional sacrifice for the sins of man. And only God could do that because God's the only one that's righteous. All right? And how did Rocco, like, I just want to ask you, like, how did you come to this knowledge of Jesus? How did you come out of this darkness oh, yeah. knowing that Praise he God. is the word? How did you get to that place? Praise God. Well... I'll tell you, well, that's how I just started thinking about it. Well, then I got that out of my mind. But anyhow, I just went on uh, living my life. And I got into the uh, insurance business. I was in the insurance business in 1966, 67. And uh, I spent five years in the insurance business. And uh, after I was in the insurance business for five years, you know, out of nowhere, I got up one Sunday morning, and uh, I, was got, time out, I was getting dressed. Well, me and my wife, we never got along real good. You know, you can't. You can't have a marriage around a beer bottle, okay, or anything else that goes with it, with that lifestyle. You can't. It doesn't. It's not going to work good. Yeah. But anyhow, I got out of bed one Sunday morning. I went out and I put my suit on. My wife, you know, she, she thought I was getting ready to go to work. You know, she, she, it was Sunday. She says, "What are you doing? You know, where are you going?" I said, "I said I'm going to church." Mm. She said, "You're going to church." I never went to church. I mean, never went to church. I got married. When I was 19 years old. I went Christmas and Easter faithfully till I was 28. I was out drinking with a man when I was 28 years old. And another agent, he's a little older than me, and he sent people out of nowhere. Then people that talk about God, he said, there ain't no God. And I never talked about God because I didn't know anything and didn't care, you know. But I thought to myself when he said that, I said, yeah. I said, where's the God? Where's he at? Right? Where's he at? Well, I, I had no idea where he was at, Okay. And I didn't know him, and neither does anybody else until he reveals himself. You know, there's a scripture in John chapter 14, I believe around verse 21, where he says, He that keepeth my commandments, he that loveth me, and he that loveth me will be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself unto him. I'll make myself known unto him. Mm -hmm. And that's what he does. Okay? That's, I just remember these things that happened. But I just got up this morning out of nowhere when I got up, and I, I says, she says, where are you going to go to church? I, I says, I don't know. I never, I never thought about none of this. It just, I just happened. I felt good. I got up. I'm going to church. And uh, I said, well, I said, I'll go out there at my sister. I'll go down to her church. I says, my kids go there. Our kid, the neighbors were taking our kids because my wife used to sing in the choir and go to church all the time, but we got messed up. Okay. And uh, but anyhow, I, I got my sisters. My sister said, what are you doing here? I said, I'm going to church. She said, you're going to church. I said, yeah. She said, okay, come on in. So I went in. I went to church. I come home from the church. I said to my wife, I says, I'm going to go back here next week. I like that, you know. But the Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Uh, I didn't know that. I wasn't going to hear it where I was hanging out, okay. And uh, I heard the word of God. So I, I wanted to hear it again. I went back. It's what God draw me. Jesus said, John 6, 4, 4, no man can come to me except my father draw him. That's right. And it's what God was doing. I didn't know then, you know, but I know it now. And, and so I went down, I started going every week. I was going for about how long, maybe, maybe a month, two months, maybe, I don't know, know for sure. And about, maybe after about two months, uh, my uncles, uh, my uncle owned a bar there in Shootersville. It's called Junebugs now, but it was Marino's. 
and uh, it was a hotel, and me and my two uncles, they worked in a coal mine, I worked in the insurance business. So on the weekends, we was gonna panel all the upstairs, all the rooms up there. So I had to miss church, my first time I missed after I started going. So I'm up there nailing the nails into the paneling, and we were hanging up paneling all over the place, and an old devil was talking to me. Now, I did, she says, well, how do you know? But I didn't know this stuff then, but I see it now, okay? I'll tell you how I know it now, okay? But he told me, he said, you don't have to go to church. You know, I said, yeah, you know, because this is the first time I missed church when I was going. And I, he says, look, he says, and people go to church, they'll be closer to God than you. Your family look at you. You never, you never killed anybody. You just, you just have a cake of beer. You just have a lot of love. You love a big family. We have a big family, you know. You will be there, but you just won't be close to Jesus like the people go to church. That was good enough for me because I didn't know Jesus anyhow, so I just wanted to be there. He said, but you'll be there. I said, yeah, so I wasn't going to go back to church, okay? That was on Sunday. Monday morning, uh, Monday afternoon, I come home from my deb and I'm coming up the hill. There comes a pastor down. He flagged me down. Hey, he said, I missed you yesterday. I says, yeah. I thought that my sister going to miss me a lot more because I'm not coming back, you know? And uh, here he says, you know, I got a good message next week. I'd like for you to come out and hear it. Well, I couldn't say no. That's why I got in so much trouble. But uh, anyhow, I says, uh, I says, all right. I says, uh, I'll come out. And uh, so I went and told my uncles, I said, I'm going to go to church next week. You know, I said, I've seen the pastor. I said, I'll come down after church. Said, you go to church. And I said, you, you know, I needed it. <laughs> I was a black sheep with my family. You know. I said, okay, I'm going to go. So I went to church, you know. Well, I'm in church and I was sitting there that day. And the only thing I heard, I'm sit I couldn't just see where I was sitting. I couldn't see the whole scene. It's in my mind. It's in there forever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and the pastor's up there preaching, and this is the only thing I heard. He said, Jesus said, except a man is born again, he's not going to see the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And he said, and Jesus said, except a man is born again, he's not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Remember powerful words. We pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth. And people pray that repetitiously. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth. But if you're not born again, you're not going to see the kingdom, and you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. They need to hear that in John chapter 3, verse 3, and, chapter, and verse 5 or 7 there, when, John, when Jesus says, except man is born of water and of the Spirit. Water is the Word. It's the worship of water by the Word. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit is the Holy Ghost. It takes the Word and the Holy Ghost to give you life. Mm -hmm. and you're not going to get it just sitting in a bar room or sitting in your living room. I mean, you could get it sitting in your living room if you're watching this program right. or if you're maybe watching on TV. But once you meet Jesus Christ, you want to meet His family. You become part of the family of God. Okay, and, and uh, in the house, I heard them words. And when the pastor spoke them words, I, right then, the Spirit of God cut my heart. The Bible 4.12 of Hebrews says, The Word of God is living and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts deep into the divine and sunder of the soul and the spirit and into the joint and the marrow. The Word cut deep into my soul and my spirit. We have a soul and spirit. It's dead to God. And you have to quicken. And the Spirit of God is the only one that can quicken or give life to your spirit. The God spoke to my heart right there. Convicted me of sin. Mm. Now Jesus said, except you repent, you're going to all likewise perish. That's what Jesus said when he started his ministry. It takes repentance. Well, what am I going to repent of? If I don't know what I'm repenting of, well, just ask Jesus to come in your heart. I mean, oh, Jesus come into my heart. You know, you're going to do it. But you're not repenting. The, 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 the the doctrine is repentance. You got to repent. You got to turn away from that life. Yeah. You got to turn away from it. You got to walk away from it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're done with that life. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away, or the old life is passed away, and all things are become new. A brand new life started for me. Mm -hmm. A beautiful life. A life where I have understanding and I have wisdom, I have knowledge. Okay, I make different decisions, better decisions. This is what a lot of people need. Homes are being broken, being divided. The devil came not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And that's what he's doing on this earth. That's why the world's in the shape that it's in right now because they want to keep God out of the picture. People are too busy for God. Mm -hmm. Jesus said it'll be like it was in the days of Noah. They were eating, drinking, marrying, building, buying, and selling until the time that Noah entered into the ark. Okay? And, and they were taken away with the flood. They were too busy for God. They were too busy. He's eating, drinking, marrying, and building, buying, and selling. That's the way it is today. People don't have time for God. They don't have time to go to church. They'll grab it on, on the on radio or grab it here, but they don't fellowship. They don't get into the fellowship, and they don't grow in that grace and the knowledge of the Lord and putting him first in your life. Jesus wants that first place. He's first in my life. When I get out of bed, it's Jesus. Here I am, Lord. Use me this day, wherever you want, however you want. And 
and let me be pleasing to you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the fire of God. This is the life of being filled in the spirit, Amen. like to go from what he had described, you know, that drunken state, brokenness in his household to the infilling of the spirit of the living God. Amen. And he was literally brought to life. And how long have you had your church? Like the, the church, has been here, I think it's going to be 35 years this year. This is yeah. the power of the word of God. And with that being said, we want to just reiterate on that scripture that uh, Pastor Rocco said. It's in John 3, 3. It says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And I would love for you just to, you know, I believe there are people watching, Pastor, that they are on the edge. They identify with a lot of what you're saying, but they have not committed to making Jesus the Lord of their life. Would you just speak to them right now? Amen. You know, you spoke before you said, uh, you know, that uh, blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. A man doesn't know the righteousness of God, has no knowledge of it. Apostle Paul said in Romans 1, 16, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God and the salvation unto the Jew first and also unto the Gentile. He said, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. In the gospel of gospel, God has revealed the righteousness of God from faith to faith. As we read and as we learn it, as we start walking it, as a newborn babe, he said, you're going to desire the sincere milk of the word that you might grow thereby. If so be, you have tasted that God is gracious. So milk belongs to the, to the babes who, to, who seek and after righteousness. Okay, your first time, my first baby step in righteousness, I did something that was right. I made a right decision. I rejoiced in myself. It felt so good. I did something right. Okay, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And when a man departs from evil, he gets understanding. Okay, everything changes in your life. Your decisions are different. Everything's different. He says, if thou shalt confess back in the book of Romans in chapter 10, and verse 8, he said, this is the faith which we preach unto thee. It is nigh thee even in thy mouth. Yet if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's what it takes. It's believing it. Actually, First John 1, 9, he said, if, you, if I confess my sin, if we confess our sin, he said, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. How far away is God? He's right in your mouth. And if you should confess, God, forgive me, I'm a sinner. Acknowledge that I am a sinner. I was shaped within iniquity in my mother's womb. I was conceived in sin, God. I need to be delivered. Romans in 3.23, first above, above that, it says the law. In the law, there's no justification. People think I keep the Ten Commandments. There's no justification in the law. That we are saved in, 320, in, in, in uh, 6.23 there, or 26 rather, or 5. He says that we are saved by faith in Christ's blood from our sins which are past. That blood was shed. God had to be a man, come to be a man, and, and, and die a substitutional death on that cross for you and me. And by faith in his righteousness of what he did, okay, what he did. God, I believe that Jesus died for my sin. I believe that, I believe that he, he was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities, God. I believe it. And I was separated from you. And he, was, and he became separated so I could be joined. God was in Christ Jesus, reconciling us back unto himself. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And he took the sins of the world upon himself and God turned it back on him so that God would turn his face to us through the blood of Jesus. He Amen. loves you. Amen. He loves you. God loves you. He wants to come into your life. He wants to give you a beautiful life. You're fighting it, man. You're fighting it. I was fighting it. I was going the way I thought I would satisfy my flesh, satisfy my flesh. And really, oh yeah, I love my family. I love this. I love that. But this first, wrong, wrong. Jesus is first. In my family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pastor Rocco. I'm a great grandfather. Mm. I just had three great grandsons this <laughs> past year. <laughs> three of them. And uh, three boys. And uh, I never adopted grand, great granddaughter as well. Yeah. And how many years married to your yeah. wife? Yeah. Huh? How many years married to your wife? 65 years. That's 60. Incredible. It would never happen had I not met Jesus. It would never happen. That's right. You have such. I wouldn't be here had I not met Jesus. You have Amen. such, like just hearing your, just like your story and what you've walked through that you taste and you see that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is good. And just hearing what you walked out of 
I mean, so many people can relate right where Pastor Rocco is with addiction and drinking and just seeing your whole life fall apart. But in Jesus, Amen. that's where we find life. And today, we just want to encourage you, if you've been watching Hope Today and you've heard Pastor Rocco's amazing story and testimony and he's just pouring out the Word of God, that this is an invitation for you today to come to taste and see that mm -hmm. Jesus is good, that Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, and Jesus mm -hmm. is the life. And give us a call at our prayer line at 888-665-4483 because we'd love to pray with you. Yeah. And we want you to experience the abundant life in Christ Jesus. I mean, and I know we only have like two minutes left. Final, final thoughts. I think, well, one thing we were talking, you know, in the green room and I just, I loved the morning of preparation even for today, but I asked him, you know, in all of ministry, he's been about 40 years doing, you know, ministry and pouring out into others. And his words of wisdom were just that God takes the lowly and he uses them for his glory. So us who are in ministry, we should never look upon anyone around us as if they're too far gone or that they couldn't be used. Because in his own life, what he experienced was when the Holy Spirit came in, he began to seek after righteousness and hungering for God. And the Holy Spirit did such a work in him that God would choose to use Amen. Pastor Rocco or you or myself or Sydney. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. He desires to take the lowly, fill it with the spirit of the living God, us, and to use us for his glory. Amen. And I just, I'm going to leave with that today. And your testimony is absolutely amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, whew, I just feel this like, just so refreshed by the word of God. And just, just stop and think about the darkest place where you've been. And I love that in the Bible, it says, even if I make my bed in hell, he is there. So grab hold of that today, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what it looks like, know that he is Emmanuel, that he is God with us. He is the God that is with you through everything. He is our redeemer. He redeems us out of the pit of destruction. He is our rescuer and he is our deliverer. And our sincere heart, our sincere hope for you is that you experience his love, his power and his freedom and his life like never before. We love you, God bless you, and have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow.